Well, hi, yeah. Ray. Thank you for joining me here today. Uh, I understand. Thank you, Sonia. You're welcome. I understand that you've just had a book published recently. I have. I have. Yes, five in the quiver. I'll hold that up. Ah, I was going to ask you what it was called. Oh, that's a really lovely cover, eh? Yeah. Why did you choose that particular um, title? Okay, well, there are five longer stories in it, and I just wanted something to be a bit original, uh, to indicate that there were five stories. Mm -hmm. And I like to think that the, as an arrow hits the mark, that the stories hit the mark, at least I hope so. Uh, these stories go back in time uh, to the 1915 Gallipoli campaign for the first one, and then by leapfrogging forward to the 60s and then our present century, we look at different situations that the characters face, challenges they face. So we start off in wartime, but the rest are peacetime ones. Well, that sounds awesome. So uh, what I understand that you already had an, uh, another book that uh, is out there on the market. What I have. Uh, this was published last year, as you can see, Life's, Life's Winners and a Few Losers, which is 20 short stories. Now, they were written originally, um, well, uh, to, to go into short story competitions. Uh, some of them received acknowledgement. They didn't all go in, of course. Maybe out of the 20, perhaps eight to 10 got submitted. I think three got an acknowledgement. Uh, and I was limited to 2,000 words for the ones that I submitted, which is the majority, well, many of the stories. So therefore, they, they were short stories, short, short stories. And uh, people who read them, and I got a reasonable amount of... Um, you know, acceptance from local people and people elsewhere said, could you tell us more? It was a short story. You, you concluded it. That's fine. But you've talked about this, that and the other, and you didn't have time to expand on it. I'd really like to know more. So I thought, aha, this begs a sequel. So for the five stories I've now composed, three are sequels to some of the stories in this book. Um, however, I had to write these new stories complete within themselves because not any, everybody would have seen the first book and I didn't want them to feel they had to read it first. Therefore, they're complete within themselves with very little of the original story summarised, just enough to make sense. So those who read the first book wouldn't feel they were being bogged down by repetitive material. So I had to tread a fairly fine line there but I, I'm happy with the way they've come out. Well that sounds uh, really good. Tell me are they all short stories? Uh, well they're, they're the, with the new book they're all yeah. longer stories. I mean it comes to 259 pages so um, you may say that each is almost a book within itself but not quite. So um, they are fairly long stories um, but not overly long. Okay, so what motivated you to begin with to actually go into writing? Well, I was motivated by U3A, the writers group, which was founded a little over five years ago by Maggie Buchanan and Lee Anderson, who are our members. Mm -hmm. And I'm very grateful to those lovely ladies for doing it because they gave me the impetus to write. Even though I had been doing some writing before that, I never thought about getting work pu published or even going into a competition. Amazing. So uh, I thank them for that. And uh, I, I did get some critiquing from members of the writers group. Uh, they weren't able to see all of the work, but what they did critique, I was very grateful for. So I'm <laughs> indebted to U3A. <laughs> critiquing as long as it's kind. <laughs> It's very well, they were frank and honest, uh, and that's what I wanted. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want people to say, look, it's great when it wasn't. A no, and no. I was told of some improvements, which is fair enough, and I'm very grateful for that. And I incorporated those. So uh, there you go. Well, I do believe, I think you mentioned it a little bit earlier, that you actually have entered a number of competitions and have yes. done well in those. Well, they, they were acknowledged. I got a third prize. It was an Australia-wide competition, so I got a joint third prize for one, and the others were 
either commended or highly commended. Uh, so uh, I was happy with that. Uh, it was the Port Stephens Literature Awards competition, which is uh, still open actually for this year, right. for the end of this month. Mm. Well, that's good to know for all those budding writers out there. They may well leap into it with boots and all. You never know. You now, never know, Sonia. Do you have a favourite story in that uh, most recent book you wrote? That's a very good question. I like all of them. Probably my favourite is story number three. Right. Now, that story is called Chasing Memories, and you will be interested to know that there, there is an art theme to that story. It's a stolen art treasure, wow. a treasure stolen from France, from uh, Paris. Well, actually, it's, it's stolen at Giverny at Claude Manet's old home, which you may well have visited, and uh, it makes its way elsewhere. I don't want to say too much more, but I have based the hero, if you like, of the story, the main character on a local person who may well be identified. And he has given me permission to publish it, by the way. And everything I write in that is quite complimentary. <laughs> I have no fear of criticism. Well, you all may locals... work out who he is. <laughs> all our locals can start the guessing game. Perhaps we should have a guessing competition. <laughs> <laughs> I think those who know him will come up with it but uh, there you go well that sounds really great and now i actually understand that the first story you wrote there you wrote from a hospital bed i did or at least i planned it from a hospital bed okay. sadly last december i was very very sick i had double pneumonia yeah. and the local doctor dr Kalpa, some of you may know her lovely doctor yeah. said you're going to have to spend christmas in hospital there's no alternative because the surgery is closed. There's not a lot of medical help other than the ambulance. Mm -hmm. You've got pneumonia and I really want you looked after. So she put me into Lake Macquarie Private Hospital, which was a great choice. I was well looked after there. Ended up in the cardiac award because there were some concerns there. And feeling a bit sorry for myself and not being able to do much, I had to well, jolly myself along, I suppose, even though I was getting excellent treatment, but rigged up to oxygen and so on, you know, not much fun. Uh, they tested me for COVID, by the way, and it wasn't that. It was uh, purely a chest infection that had gone bad. So no COVID, I hasten to add. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, people in life have had it worse than I have. And I, I went back in my mind to a visit to Gallipoli, which Leonie and I had taken some four years previously. And I, I was very moved by that, as was she, and the privations of the soldiers, what they endured, what they sacrificed. And I thought, gee, those, those men had it worse than I had. And, and so the story started to form. How, how could somebody in a terrible situation on Gallipoli get out of it? And I tried to think of a novel situation, not just the shot and the shell and the bayoneting and all that terrible stuff but what could happen to somebody that was different and i think i've come up with a different perspective on it but one that i believe could have happened now it's fictional uh, but i wanted to incorporate at least one historical character into the story and i've done that uh and we, you know well you'll have to read word power to see how it comes out well, I very much look forward to doing that. It sounds really inspirational. And what I did notice, uh, I think it says that uh, on the front or the back of your book, I'm not sure, but it's life's challenges. Sometimes we see them but other times they are forced upon us. And yes. um, obviously your book is very much based on how we get through challenges or, or it, it has a stream through it like that by the sounds of things. And I guess it's very pertinent for the time in which we live right now. Yes, that's now, right. Obviously nothing like Gallipoli, et cetera, et cetera, but certainly challenges like we have never encountered before. So your book, I would think, is uh, a really, really wonderful thing to have on one's desk or bedside table at this particular moment in time. Yes. Would you agree? <laughs> yeah. I certainly would agree with that. <laughs> yes, people face these challenges. Um, so the, the different challenges are the soldier's dilemma that I've talked about in wartime, the rest of peacetime. There's a dangerous cult 
which is story number two, which takes place in the 1960s. How people can be tricked by those who have a particular message to sell, which is quite false, and how the cult can be a mask for very nasty activities. How can this be exposed? We see a cadet reporter exposing this terrible cult. Then story number three, which I've already outlined, the search for a stolen art treasure, which is a worldwide search. You wouldn't believe where Claude Monet's precious painting worth 30, 40 million euros ends up. Oh, I wish I the next come one come is Justice for a Ruthless Con Woman. Uh, not all my characters are male. We, the women get a, a look in in the stories as well. And w women can be good as well as bad, bad as well as good. In this case, this woman who uh, is the Lonely Hearts con woman uh, gets her comeuppance. And then finally, because... about it. don't tell too much about it. <laughs> no, no, no. You've got me on the edge of my seat already, I'm sure. But... Uh, so to, to spoiler alert <laughs> and finally critical events in pakistan now this is the longest story it's called gateway to freedom and it's actually based on real life events in pakistan that are happening at this moment it's set in 2018 but it is based on the work of a christian charity in pakistan and i have their permission to publish the story obviously i changed the name uh, but uh, it's, yes, so it's, it was very moving when I found out the different problems that are happening in countries such as that right now. Wow. Well, it certainly sounds really interesting, Ray. Thank you so much for coming on this and telling me all about that. Um, now, where would people actually uh, purchase a copy of your book? Okay, it is on the internet, but uh, I will offer people a better deal by purchasing from me uh, privately. So if they would just contact me by email, mm -hmm. uh, lrkypert at dodo.com.au. Yeah, I'll make sure that uh, I... Um, you make sure that that's put on it and uh, the, the, the cost is here, the local cost is $20 per copy. Right, that's absolutely awesome. Well, Ray, thank you so much for telling me all about your book, uh, your two books, as a matter of fact. I am really, really looking forward to reading it. It sounds so good. And thank you and have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you for your time and for this session. And the same to you too. You're well, very welcome. Bye. Bye now.